Okay, now can you guys hear me? Alright, is the... He streams up. Has the stream restarted yet? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it, it has. Hmm. Success. Uh, Alright, so we have nine players in the lobby, and the tenth player apparently wants to have pizza instead of starting the game. So he's like picking up pizza or something. And then once he has pizza, he will. Wait, was. I hope it. Wait. I think we're. We're good, right? You you guys can hear me just fine. There's no sound. That was the problem. There was a weird sound. And yeah, Gorman, I had the stream muted in the background. I wasn't didn't have it. Okay, I was just checking to make sure that their fifth player was not kicked from the lobby. He in fact was not kicked from the lobby. It's all good. Hey, so we're gonna sit here and wait for them to get pizza. Man, I am so hungry. Yeah, our sound is perfect. Okay. How is your week? Or day? Hang on a second. I'm trying to set something. Here we go. I to cut the stream off so that way I don't have that up. I don't need that. Okay. We're good. My day was good. Oy. Oh, we need to get rid of this too. Now, so if something screws up with the stream, let me know in chat because I don't have the stream open anymore. So, apparently, we are waiting for someone to get pizza, which shouldn't take this long. But okay, what what is the actual rule, by the way? Is it fifteen minutes or thirty minutes? I believe it's fifteen minutes. I think. I thought so too. But I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Well, did they already do chat bands? Oh no! They I might saw... have to use their sub and their sub was kicked from the lobby and so if they have to use their sub then we're going to have to remake the lobby because he was kicked and so he can't rejoin this one. He's back! Yes! Success. Yeah, they did chat bands. Uh, Garagas, Kassadin, Kazix, and Mundo for the chat bands. This is Cutie Cats versus Five Man Ganks. Cutie Cats on the left hand side. Five Man Ganks on the right hand side. Okay, are we are we ready? What are we waiting for? Ready to go? Ready. Hello. Hello. <laughs> go. Yay! All right, All right, we are here for Dominate Dominion number ninety-four, and Gander has evolved to Coravel. <laughs> Wait, so are you casting as Gander, or are you just casting? Uh, no, no, I'm just casting. If, if we're going to do that, we need someone to cast as you, too. Otherwise, it I, won't work. Because I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. It just can't be, it can't be March 1st. It has to be before March 1st. Well, I don't know, you'll, you'll have to talk to Fancy about uh, how he ditches people 30 minutes before they're supposed to stream. Well, as long as it's not March 1st, okay. I'm, I'm okay with waiting a week. Yeah, I'll let him know that. All right, so the first four bands were the chat bands. It was Gragas, Kassadin, Kazix, and Mundo. It wasn't in that order. But 
was yeah. Kaz Kazix and Gragas banned by the Left Hand Team, which is Cutie Cats and Mundo and Kassadin banned by Five Man Gangs, which is the Right Hand Team. There we go. So Kassadin and Kazix are two very strong picks in general bands. Um, you see those banned a lot. Uh, Kassadin's got a lot of mobility, jumps around everywhere, and people really don't like him because of uh, what he used to be, which was basically unstoppable. Uh, since the nerf, she's been a little more easy to handle, but he's still one of the best champions in the game. Uh, Kha'Zix is considered by a lot of people to be the best champion for Dominion. Um, he can jump over, execute somebody, and then get back out because of resets, and most people find that to be extremely annoying. Uh, Dr. Mundo has started getting very popular lately, and I think it's because um, the healing aura was removed, and a lot of people are under the opinion that his ultimate was affected by the healing aura, and so they think he's a lot better than he was. His ultimate was, in fact, not affected by the healing aura. So well, there's the the defense mastery. Second wind is actually too, yes. really, really huge. Like the perseverance is good on him, but the important thing for Dominion on window is uh, is second wind, because it's like a free a fierce free spirit visage for while he's below ten percent. Yeah, it's, it's made a whole lot of tanks very good that used to not be all that great here. Yeah, I'm not looking, but he's a champions again. I think it was the first iteration of the 3v3 team that played Mundo, and then people started picking him up after that. MMKH played him a few times. I know that MMKH used to like playing Mundo, um, and Downs played him quite a bit. Uh, Grog is being the last ban. I'm not sure if that's directed at somebody. I don't think these two teams know each other, so maybe not. <laughs> I think I think they said in the chat they weren't really sure what to ban. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know. I'm not sure Gragas is worth a ban at this point. I'm also not sure Pan or Greg, Pantheon is worth a ban. I'm not sure Gangplank is really worth a ban. Yeah, Gang Gangplank. You might see it because a lot of people think, oh, well, Gangplank's got his nice ultimate, which allows him to cover the map at a global area, so he can interrupt anybody's cap. And so a lot of people think that he's strong on Dominion simply because of that. Um, and they also ban Pantheon, who does happen to be a good ban, but he also has that extreme. Um, range on his ultimate, so that might might be why they did both of those. Vi is a good target ban, but I wouldn't say she's anything more than a target ban. She can, if she gets going, Vi can take out uh, Squishies really, really fast. Um, the Kale pick is good against Vi. Um, yeah. Vi's not here, so. Uh, Ramus is also one of those champions, extreme mobility, gets around the map really fast. Um, he's considered to be pretty OP, but by a lot of people who don't play Dominion, um, he is still pretty Same strong. Same thing for Shaco. In my opinion, for in, in Dominion, and yeah, Shaco is a pub stomper. Maokai is a very strong pick. Um, he's got his, his ultimate prevents people from engaging on his team. If you're fighting, if you're fighting um, in the Maokai ultimate, you are simply you're you're not doing that much. Losing twenty percent of your damage. It's not the way to fight. It's 40% of an Alistar ult for his entire team. We do have... Well, I can't talk about summoner spells yet. <laughs> yeah, 50 seconds. Uh, well, actually, I think we can talk about them in like 10 seconds because of the stream delay, but I'm not exactly sure how long the stream delay is. Yeah, we'll just wait for it to go. Um, yeah. We have... Riven, Urgot, Jarvan, Wukong, and Yasuo on one side, and the first thing that stands out to me about this is they don't have a single bit of magic damage. So if, um, which one's on the right again? Five Man Ganks is on the right? Yeah, Five, five, five Man Ganks gets some armor, uh, Cutie Cats is in a lot of trouble. They, uh, they do, do have, have a lot of knockups for Yasuo. They do, and they have quite a bit of armor shred between Jarvan and Wukong, so they could take down a target. Um, Still, it's very. And then Yasuo risky to has do. his. Okay, I have a question for you. Which yes. I'm not sure if you're gonna know the answer to this, but um, if I have like a Trundle ult or a Wukong Crippling Blow or like anything that reduces armor, is that removing bonus armor or is that removing base armor or is that removing like equal parts of each? That is a good question, and no, I don't know the answer to that. I think I've always assumed it's the entire of the armor uh, that they have. 
base plus bonus, but I don't but, know that. But the point time. is that, like, okay, because the way that Yasuo <laughs> ult works is that you get, I think it's 50% penetration on bonus armor only. So before Yasuo came out, it literally didn't matter if you were removing base armor or removing bonus armor. But with the Yasuo ult, does he get, like, does the Wukong just remove bonus armor? So you have, like, how how important is that penetration when you already got to remove some of the armor? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. We'll have to, I don't know if anybody's in chat that would know about it at this point because they're probably all playing. Um, oh, you can take the blockers off now. Yeah, oh, you I, did. I did. Um, so that's what I was saying. We have five revives on one side and none on the other. So we shall see, but the odds are strongly in um, five-man gang's favor from previous history. <clears throat> I believe the non-revive teams have about an 8% win rate against revive teams. Something that like sounds that. about right, yeah. <clears throat> we actually have two garrisons this game, which is something that fell off quite a bit. With the new masteries and garrison losing the splash damage, it really hurt... Um, Garrison as a whole, because that was pretty much the main reason why you would take Garrison. Um, now, especially because most fights don't occur on points, they occur in the jungle. <clears throat> yeah. Garrison's just fallen off really hard. We do have a lot of ghosts, six of them to be exact, um, which that's actually a lot, a lot of ghosts. Times. Seven mobility spells. The flash exhaust from Riven. So general take on Riven, I think, and SR might be Flashing Knight most of the time. You generally, you go Flashing Knight. You yeah. can go Flash Barrier in some matchups as well. If you're against, like, a LeBlanc, maybe, you would want to go Barrier. Barrier is actually really good on Riven because she gets so much shield from her E, and then you get even more shield, and it's like, what? I really can't kill you. Barrier is good a lot of times for baiting people because they yeah. think they're going to kill you, and then you have an extra 400 health for three seconds, and you can turn the fight pretty hard. It's a pretty short cooldown as far as summoner spells go, too. So, we don't have an ignite on the side of five man ganks. Two ignites over on cutie cuts. It's so interesting to see what people take when they don't go for revive, because you have so many more spells to work with. And you probably do want to take a revive. Let's see if this works. I want to make sure these are set up correctly. Um, I like to put the blockers back on before switching to the load screen. Yep. Oh, you did that. I did. Okay. Cool. Uh oh, leak client. Oh, there we go. It does that sometimes for me. It acts like it blocks up and then it's fine. Did it just like say unexpected error has happened and then you had to click OK? Yeah, I didn't click OK. I just clicked on the screen and then it went away. I, I don't get it. It's just like there there's an unexpected error. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? Oh, And then oh. everything's fine. I don't know. So the top team is Cutie Cat and the bottom team is Five Man Ganks. So the Your top... Your overlay... Should be up for you. Right. In game. It's not. Like, just looking at it, um, you That's need to. Oh, never mind. No, 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 no. No, your overlay is fine. Oh, yeah. My Twitch was wrong. It's all good. It's all good. I I was really confused. I mean, it's it's up right now. It doesn't make sense right now. It will no, 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 no. no. So, okay, yeah. so what happened was my, um, my Twitch window was wider, and so then it puts like a black column on either side, right? But that blended into the loading screen, so I thought that that was just part of the loading screen, and then the mini map looked like it was too far away from the wall. Yeah, I think Gorman was telling you that the leak's client for some reason is in like twelve eighty by eight hundred resolution default or something like that. So yeah, it's what's in the the black screen, kind of like on an HD um, channel. Okay, it's good. It's all good. But we're good. We just have to wait for a Kale's toaster to load here. Oh, Don't yeah. insult those Cylons. They got a couple of a couple of guys taking a long time here. Cylons are people too. Be curious to see what starting items they get, because a lot of times people that don't have revive will not use the prospector items, which 
in most cases is the way you want to go is the prospector item. Although I really like that one lease insert that we saw where it was like two cloth armors or three cloth armors and two rejuvenation beads to build into Tabby, Warden's Nail, and Tiamat. I thought that was really cool. You, like, um, <clears throat> five man games could get away with putting some armor on at the very beginning because they don't have any, um, yeah. DP up there. It would be kind of nice. They for also, them. assuming that Urgot is bought, they have no range in top lane. Yeah, I, I'm not sure who's bought at all. I, I mean, you would think it would be Urgot, but it could also be Riven or Yasuo. Who's going to be bought for a uh, five man ganks, do you think? Probably Olaf. <clears throat> would be my guess. Alright, so if it's Olaf or Urgot, how is that going to go? Uh, Olaf wins that, I think. He's going to. It's very. It's difficult. Ur Urgot's kind of a slow character. It's kind of difficult for him to dodge the Urgot's or Olaf's axes. So if he comes in on him, he's just he's just going to be able to just flat out out damage him at first. Urgot might be able to uh, beat him late game, but I, I don't know that he's going to get to late game. Assuming the Olaf is very aggressive, which is what Olaf normally is. Well, we'll see. Eight percent is a lot bigger than zero percent. Infinitely bigger, even. I'm gonna go ahead and. Whoa! Why is my chat in the middle of the screen? Whoa! Let's oh, yeah. so go over here. Okay, so Urgot started with a tear. Tear and a long sword, so he's gonna be very slow. Welcome to the crystal skull. Okay, someone. Oh, I still have chat on. Um, how do you turn the chat off there, Gorman? Um, you click the little I, and then at the bottom left, where it says like Fog of War, and then there's a drop down menu that says All, then you click the I, and then you click off chat. Ah, gotcha. Alright, but... off chat, got it. Why is my chat in the middle of the screen? Oh, did they move it for obs the Spectre client? Alright, anyway, this is Dominate Dominion number 94, first game of the day. I think it's the round of 16 that we have. It's not a full round, but... Technically round of 32. Oh wow, round of 32 this week, we, okay. We have 23 teams, so... Yeah. Alright, so this is the round of 32, but it is actually the round of 23, yeah. And it is... The Cutie Cats versus Five Man Ganks. Moving on to the Crystal Scar here. Looks like we do have Urgot versus Jace going to be balling, so a lot of poke that Five Man Ganks could have that they're not going to have this time at the fight in the windmill. Team has captured the drill. We did have Little a laggy. pair of glacial shields on her. And there is the engaging human from Drive, and there's a knock up onto Hecarim. He's going to go down for first, but he does have the revive, remember. They're chasing down onto Orthodox. Atherdox, the assassin down, there's a knock up from Yasuo. A double kill for Drive, and he's forward again. There's a dash forward from Yasuo onto Pyro Kid. Pyro Kid's going to take a lot of damage. Who gets the health? It's Riven flashes away as well. Leona going to heal from Kale there. Turns on that W. He gets a lot of armor and MR from W. But Hecarim coming back with the extra HP. He also gets his Relic Shield once again. Or his Riddick Shield, rather, but the Windmill fight is actually won very, very decisively there by Cutie Cats. If you don't have revives, that's how you have to win the Windmill fight, is very decisively. Because if yeah. you sit around and play around, they're going to come back with way more life than you are. And Bali and Urgot taking a ton of damage from Jace there. Yeah. Urgot's going to be very squishy right now. He's got a tear and a long sword, nothing else. Ah! Fight. Heck, ah, heck out. Out. Gonna go down. Right now... Blue team is moving around like a team, and purple team is moving around one at a time in the lane. The ribbon looks like she might be coming down for a gank. And they can do that because they just took out one person, so they still have a 3v3 up here. Yeah, and importantly, it was Hecarim that they killed, who had revive, or who had already burned his revive, rather. Lilagi coming into the bot lane. Jay's going to be able to get away. There's the acceleration gate. No stun yet. There's a dash forward. There's a stun now. We're going to get a little bit more uh, dashes coming in. Slight knockup. Hyperkinetic. Rad hyperkinetic position reverse with the E locked on and Rem to killed Wind Slash. Top lane, the minion wave has been cleared out. That's really the danger, is that Okay. Damn. 
Alright, I'm going to actually set up my stream for reals. Okay, just double check, because it just keeps happening when I want to talk over you. Yeah, I'll let you keep casting. You can do play by play, yay! <laughs> Jace is going to be able to push on Urgot. Um, Urgot's tier should allow him to put out some more wave play than he normally would, but Jace simply has better wave play. Riven is down here again for the game. Uh, Urgot missed the E, so Jace is probably going to be able to get away from that. And we have people farming minions at the top. Oh, Hecarim's gonna go in on this. It's a nice EQ combo from Jace. Drop, drop, Urgot, drop Riven really low, and Riven is gonna go down. And Urgot's probably gonna fall. But with no revives, they're gonna need someone to cover bot lane, but Leona is going for mid, so they aren't gonna be able to cover bot lane. So that should be bot point two, uh, purple team. And the top point is also receiving quite a bit of pressure. We got Sula with Wukong are holding at half health. So Leona's coming in, and she's gonna beat Jarvan up there. Which should allow them to win this fight rather easily, actually. They shouldn't take a loss. They don't need to, take, they don't need to have anybody die on there. There's no reason for it. Jarvan is wisely just going to run away. Because he could not do anything about that. And now we have a 4 cap for the paper. Jace is doing a good job holding this down. He's actually going to take Riven out. Uh, Urgot should be able to get him. Urgot is able to get him, but Urgot's going to take a lot of damage doing it. Fortunately, no one there to follow up on him. Purple Alright, I'm ready to take over the stream if I need to. Okay. Kind of because I'm going down there, so the dash forward from Yasuo onto Olaf. Olaf ignited, running away. Punk comes back to the point. There's these knock up from Cyclone. They get the launch. Uh, Hecarim him. Chasing onto Leona as well. There's a knock up from Steel Tempest. Can they get forward? Nimbus Strike, gonna get to the Sweet Shine there. And Yasuo needs two more Qs. It's funny, One more Q and then the Kale knockoff. Could save her, but <laughs> yeah, Kale could have just like slowed and sped her off, but you know, Kale doesn't like her teammate. Yeah, Kale's gonna go down again, my girl. Yeah, her ult was pretty close, but she doesn't have too much CDR yet. Blue team the we do have two Frozen Heart brushes on yeah, wow. Red Team. Olaf and Leona, which is interesting to have two in the top lane because it's kind of redundant. The Maybe they're gonna swap Olaf down and have Jace up top with his superior poke. That could be the case, even like if Jace fed bot lane. It is a valid strategy that you can do, especially with an AD carry, to give a lot of farm in bot lane, because farm is guaranteed gold income, guaranteed levels, well I guess you levels anyway, but guaranteed gold income. And then swap top for the late game. Yeah, I definitely have seen, that, have seen that happen before. And Jace is level 10, and everybody else on his team is level 8, so... Although I feel like if they were doing that, he would have started here, maybe. But it's also possible, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know about the starting tier, but I don't think he would have gone for the life steal. Hecarim is going to get away from Wukong there. <clears throat> And then just go straight for the back half again while we're calling him Channel Storm Shield there. Uh, not too much just, going on the map right now. Yeah, you're, just, you're not going to be able to push past the minions when everyone's up there. I mean, it's just pretty much a waste of time. Did they get the neutral? They did not get the neutral. No. Wow, that was extremely close there. I mean, do you have a uh -oh. DC there from Kill, Kill, so we should be getting into a pause. Jace did take bot point. I missed if he actually killed. He didn't kill Urgot because Urgot already did. Urgot must have just gone back if Jace took advantage to get the point. Let me get the game noise lower. Yes, we can. So we actually have a wicked hatchet picked up by Wukong. That is a pretty <laughs> new uh, item change that was made, but I would have expected to see it on Yasuo, not. On yeah, it's interesting. You have, the only thing you build it into is, uh, it's, I think the only thing you build it into is uh, basically Infinity as you work that down. Yeah. Forward. I'm pretty sure that's the only thing that you can build it into. Hecarim goes down in top lane. Ribbon's down. Ribbon coming down, again. yeah. And actually, Flash is forward, not quite getting the stomp. There is the sun coming down and had Urgot land the E. Gonna land those Acid Hunters also. When Slash comes across and they pick up a kill. Jace is undoubtedly winning this fight at the moment, though. It keeps causing Ribbon to come down. Yeah. Even if you're dying, as long as you're not losing the point, and you're forcing someone to come down from top lane, you're 
putting more global pressure on the map. Yes, that's right. You're supposed to try and feed whenever you play bot lane. You just lost Kale again. Jace did rush a black cleaver, which is an interesting pickup. Yeah, that is pretty interesting. He is does have a good amount of CDR. Not sure why we're not into a pause yet. Yeah, I would expect a pause. I mean, I guess purple teams, considering the fact that they're getting midpoint right now, so they don't want to pause it. <laughs> but it is 4v5, and if this turns on them, they could lose. Alright, there's the reconnect. Nona's probably not going to be able to dual Riven at this point. Probably not ever, to be honest. It's not a good yeah. match for now, uh, Hecka missed his ult over the wall up in top lane, and meanwhile in bot, Tasty Affair was able to pick up the kill onto Pocket Golem. Rampage. What's the- oh, Blitzcrank, that's the Golem. I was like, I really wish that he was playing the Steam Golem, and then I was like, but I don't remember what champion that is. Yeah, I think Kale's having internet problems, she keeps going in and out. Jace is winning that hard down there, but it's not going to be enough to win a 4v5. Was was that was that the guy we were waiting for to come back, Kale, or was it someone else? No, it was Pyro Kid. It was okay. Leona. Yeah. yeah. All right. So they did manage to capture the boneyard, but it is going to go neutral here. Pocky Golem, the Q not quite in range, and I totally meant the quarry, not the boneyard. I think I think we all know what he meant. Okay. The analogous one. That wind wall is slightly too late. I think he actually managed to get the axe through. The pop the barrier, getting chased. Not the barrier, but his passive goes down. Gun coming in with the cyclone, but that might have been his death as well. Pops goes there to get out, but the E comes in from Leona. There's the Q, there's the sun kill coming in. Gets the slow all the tower shot. Leona didn't run towards kill. Generally, if a tower is killing you, you want to run away from the tower, but you want to run away from your kill. Oh, Riven didn't get the wind flash off. It was quite a bit more damage, but still probably not worth it to go into that point. <laughs> I was looking at Riven to see if her revive was up, and I was like, wait, why doesn't... I don't see her revive. Where did her revive go? <laughs> I am so confused. Yeah, there are no revives on Riven's side. Um, we do have another gank about to happen in Bond Lane. Blue just pinged it. Yasu and Dark are both coming down here. Yeah, Taste Your Fear running away, trying to get under tower. Acid Hunter lands there, as does the E. But he manages to pick up the health. Is he going to be able to jump onto Urgot, get in range? He does get in range, but he is... Oh, he got the kill! He got the kill. The E with the max health damage, damage doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Uh, but Urgot and Jace, that fight right before, they were pretty even. So Urgot's coming back a little bit here. He's got Frozen Heart and Muramana at this point, so... And Yasuo coming in with the last breath, there's a Cataclysm also, Olaf goes down, they should be able to get the kill onto Hecarim too. He actually uses his ult there trying to get the Onslaught of Shadows, but couldn't quite. He does have revive, so he's going to be able to come back. Remember, this is a plus point, so 20 Nexus Health are at stake, plus the Mark of the Conqueror. And Jace coming in, he had to wait for his respawn. And it looks like Yasu might go down here, Windwall just a little bit too far forward, and Riven still in the fight, actually gets knocked back by Jace. Could have maybe saved her life, but she decided to go back <laughs> and drive oh my the goodness. Drive <laughs> They're all crazy. Double kill for Jace there. They just would not give that up. That is some next level team right there. Purple team. Yeah, purple doesn't want to wait around because they're going to get re reinforcements really quick. Lucon is. They got it. Lucon goes down. Nice solar flare from Leona. Manages to chaos that. And it looks like RNG going to start channeling the point while they get the kill onto Pocket Golem. This is about to be a 5 cap. And you know, we just saw the revives. We saw Hecarim died, Hecarim revived, got back onto the map almost immediately. Leona can't really 1v2 right now, so she is probably going to go down. She can draw the minions to the point, they'll capture it. Like that. Oh, <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so that is the 5 cap. But you really see, that was the revives that really won the game for this team. Well, won that fight. It's not over with quite yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I do want to point out, Olaf has picked up boots of mobility, so he's going to be moving around pretty fast, but as soon as someone hits him, of course, he'll lose that. RNG trying to run away from Riven. I guess the other thing is the lack of magic damage. We see almost everyone has picked up a lot of armor. Kale actually going for a gunblade. Not too sure how I feel about that. I I've seen, seen a lot of Kale grab it. Um, I don't agree with it myself, but I've seen, I've seen quite a few of them grab it. 
can Leona duel Urgot? Urgot has damage reduction, but Leona doesn't do any damage. Uh, she kind of she, she could have taken the health relic. Yeah, really if she'd taken the health relic, she would have had a chance here, I think, actually. Yeah, she probably would have killed me, to be honest. Oh, I don't want to go in now. Yeah, hyperkinetic position reverse are a little bit overkill there. Oh, Hackram comes in with the onslaught of shadows. Is Leona not going to live there? But Riven trying to dash out there with that Valor. Can she get away? Actually, it sort of chokes a little bit and walks in the other direction. Maybe clicked on the mini map. Goes down. It was a brief three cap there. It's it's hard to come back from a five cap. Yeah, they, it was about even in score, and you see now purple is about 150 points ahead. This was from the five cap. And Jace is going to get this neutralized bot lane too, at least. Kale is not going to quite. Oh, Yasuo in. coming in. Yeah, he'll get the neutral. Oh, Yasuo actually burned his ghost there to not get in. Going in one versus two now. Solar Flare comes down the wind well, not really doing anything because they were on the other side of that duel. He's going to try and steal Tempest away there. Yeah, he really should have come in and just interrupted the cap and waited for Riven. They could have Top two lane, two. Kale, one versus two. She gets one of them. Kill on to Wukong. No, doesn't pop the ult. Oh, I didn't have the ult anymore. Riven is able to duel Jace and kill him. Yeah, Leona might actually be able to get the kill onto Riven, yeah. A lot of damage from that explosion. Too many shields. Yeah. Lots of shields, lots of breaths. Lots of deaths. She'd have to delay him for a little while, which we have a stoppage in points. But blue team's gonna get three cap right back here. Hecarim's got a Sunfire, and I guess he's going for Eternity Force. Yeah, a little bit of extra damage there. Olaf is going for Randuin, I would guess, in addition to Broken Heart. Yeah. And dive onto the point. Ooh, took a lot of damage there. Yeah, actually, it took a surprising amount of damage. He actually has a very little health right now. I'd like to see a giant spell pick up, probably before the Warden's Mel even. Yeah, so coming in. Doesn't have ult right now, but it is up in a couple seconds. Spiridion taking a lot of damage goes down after that ult from Jarvan. Hey, Jarvan just jumped on Kale with her ultimate on it already because it didn't do any damage to anybody. And Balin, Wukong is probably going to go down here. We have one last auto attack from Jace is enough. Urgot's actually running top, doesn't even care about the capture onto the quarry. Now he's coming down, but I think they sh should be able to get it. Not quite. Yeah, the minions will finish it. And yeah, the minions will finish it. Trouble. I think his first idea was correct, stay away from the fight until someone else gets there. Yeah. And he might go down to Jace here, he's gonna go down to Jace. And yeah, so trying one versus two, puts a wind wall down there. There's the last breath knockup actually onto Leona. Survives for a little bit of time, but it is a double kill for Jace. And if purple holds this top, that could be pretty much game if they're going to go. Yeah, yeah not quite. Too much damage. <clears throat> but they still do have a three cap right now because they were able to pick up the party. So yeah, if they can hold that, it still can be game. It's just they're bleeding points so bad that they would have probably lost if they hadn't taken that point. Anyway. Yeah, and they're actually probably gonna get the kill on to taste your fear here. Yeah, it goes across from that steel tempest there from Yasuo. and Leona does manage to get the interrupt, but not onto Urgot. Meanwhile, Olaf capping in top, Riven capping the drill. Riven gets the neutral. That was the important oh, thing. Oh, yeah, Riven shouldn't have... Well, actually, yeah, she should have backed off. No, I actually really yeah. agree with what Riven did right there. And uh, she's not going to make it in time not, to Can she win slash? She can't win slash. She would have needed... If she had ulted there just to get the interrupt onto Olaf, then I think that they actually could have stayed in this game. Well, they're they are about to get bot. They have three That's people true. down there. They got it. They'll, they'll be still in the game for right now. Yeah, the minions are definitely in the secure it. Jarvan pretty low right now. On the other side, we have a lot of damage onto Wukong. He's taking a lot of pain from Kale, and Riven actually goes down. Remember, Riven has no revive. It's not a visual glitch. Yeah, and this might be the game. All I gotta do is cap this point. Wukong, yeah, Wukong does not holding. have a hold, and he just explodes there. And Leona is going for bot anyway as well, so that should probably be it. And so once again, the team with revive beats the team that doesn't have revive. So maybe you shouldn't feed the bot lane. Maybe. I don't Ace know. Ace has 2891 in terms of score. That's the highest I've seen in a while. 
Not that score matters. But still funny. What score is everything? It's a bigger internet number. So let's just see. Oh, we gotta go to the next screen. My bad. All right. On our graph here, most damage dealt to champions is Jace from bot lane. It's pretty impressive. Um, followed. There were a lot of people bought that game. Yeah, that's true. Followed by Riven and Yasuo are right behind her. Uh, right behind him, excuse me. The graveyard champion for this game. Let's see. It can is... you see, like, oh, you can see team totals. Yeah, the Pepper. losing team did more damage dealt to champions. If you go, okay, go to the top and then click on team totals. Yeah. And look at damage dealt to champions. The losing team dealt more to champions. 4k more, yeah. That happens. Honestly, that happens quite a bit, anyways, because of the revive timers, but it definitely happens when one team has revive and the other does not. Yeah, that's true. All right. 